As we dive right into this new episode of Questions from Subs, I got to give a special shout out to our newest Team Keep It Clean patron, Frank. Uh, appreciate you, Frank, for becoming a Team Keep It Clean patron. Now, um, why aren't Ravens fans ever all on the same page? First question came from my guy, Ejon. He said, good morning, Team Keep It Clean. It's 9.20 a.m. on the West Coast. So whenever you sent this, it was 12.20 p.m. On the East Coast. But anyway, he said, Engraving, I see the channel is steadily growing and I hope business is booming. I appreciate that. He said, Me, what, what he says, Lamar needs to be paid and add two wide receivers and we'll be straight. Them, Baltimore doesn't need wide receivers. We're good. Lamar just needs to learn how to throw and use the talent he's given. Same fans, let's trade Lamar for a bunch of picks who they said isn't good or worth the money he's asking for to get a real QB and add some wide receivers, even though they just said we don't need any wide receivers. Yes, I do see that a lot. I do see that because I see a lot of people say, hey, we should trade Lamar and then use that, use the funds that we wouldn't be paying Lamar to add wide receivers, but you could add wide receivers. Anyway, um, and then he said, uh, my question is, why aren't we ever, as far as Ravens fans, on the same page? This fan base seems forever split. That's how it is sometimes. Um, and I mean, with, um, with fan bases, I think the thing is that we all have our ways. We all have our own thought processes on how we think things should be, how we think the Ravens should do, what we think the Ravens should do, how we think the Ravens should address different uh, issues, problems, or just different strategies when it comes to being a better football team. Um, but since we all have our individual ways of going about whatever the Ravens have going on, we're not always going to agree. And in my opinion, I think that's fine because when you disagree, um, when you disagree respectfully uh, and you can communicate about it, you can show uh, somebody else why, hey, this is why I think this is that. And then they could be like, oh, no, mm, I, I don't agree. Let me tell you why I think that is actually this. See, but a lot of people, they, they don't do that. They don't do that. Well, Team Keep It Clean, y'all do it, which I appreciate a lot. Um, but a lot of times there are people that they can't express themselves with respect um, so then stuff can get nasty. But I mean, just as far as not being on the same page, I think it's just just the different thought process. People think of things different ways. People see things differently. And that's fine. We're not all going to see the same thing the same way. But one thing that all Ravens fans do have in common, we want to win. Super what if? Next question came from my guy, Michael. He said, morning to you and the family. Hope all is well. Hey, morning, Michael. He said, OK, here's a question. <laughs> OK. He said, what if Lamar asks Brady? To be the new OC um, Wow that would be Something right there uh, Tom Brady uh, I mean Tom Brady would have to retire First uh, so I don't even think It would come to that Whatever happens, happens. Next question came from my guy, Rodell. He said, good day, my guy. Hope all is well with you, your family, and all the team. Keep it clean. I really hate to be Debbie Downer here, but here we go. All right, here we go. Let's see what you got to say. Just me personally, I've kind of stepped into the lost confidence phase with our Baltimore Ravens. This could just be me. But I simply don't believe we are as close as everyone else believes we are, and I can't figure out why I feel this way. I'm not sure we are a DeAndre Hopkins away. I don't believe he himself is enough. I'm not sure if it's coaching i'm not sure if it's confidence in qb1 i'm not sure if it's the roster but we haven't truly made noise since winning the super bowl um and that is a fact ravens have not made any noise really since winning the super bowl they won uh two playoff games um and that's been that they've had some some nice rosters here and there um but they just they ain't been able to close. They are obviously a well-respected organization amongst the league and whatnot, but they just they ain't been making anything happen, anything significant happen uh, in the postseason, and that's when things matter the most. Obviously, regular season, it starts there. They've been doing some things there, but come postseason, yeah, man. So anyway, he said, uh, and ever since Lamar, no noise when it matters most. Okay, I should have kept reading. Um, now, it truly bothers me. That Brock Purdy and Joe Burrow have more playoff wins than Lamar Jackson. Oof. That is a nasty truth right there. Ugh. Yuck. Because what? Purdy got what? Two of them, right? Because the 49ers, they beat the Cowboys and they beat was it the Seahawks the week before, I think. Something like that. And then with Joe Burrow, I mean, yeah, they, they won a division last year, went to the Super Bowl. 
Uh, so that already put them ahead of Lamar with the playoff wins. And then now this year, they they beat the oh, they beat the Ravens in the playoffs. As a matter of fact, uh, and then they they beat the Bills too. And I, 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 I told y'all, man, I, I really thought Bills was winning it all. I thought that was set in stone. I'm like, oh, yeah, NFL going to ride, but they, nope. Bengals said, nope. And now they are in a position to be playing, to play in the Super Bowl again two straight years. That's got to be an amazing feeling, man. But anyway, he said, uh, it bothers me that when the Bengals win a division in back-to-back years, they get to the Super Bowl one year and are currently one game. I got to just keep reading and stop talking. And are currently one game from going back. It bothers me that since Lamar was drafted until now, Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs have been in every single last AFC championship game. Yes, they've been doing their thing over there. I tweeted it a couple days ago that the Chiefs, they live in the AFC championship games every year. But anyway, uh, it seems no matter how many draft picks or great drafts we have, we come up short. Uh, No matter how many great in-season trades our Ravens make, we come up short. No matter how much regular season success we have, we come up short. The one time we get to the divisional round, we look awful and haven't returned in two years. Making it out the division is not automatic for us anymore. Sure ain't. It seems since he is here and here to stay with an amazing core. Oh, yeah. You got to respect it. Um, and even then, if we make it out of the division and if we make the playoffs next year, we haven't seen Lamar in the playoffs in two years. Oh, yeah, we haven't. Uh, his regular season resume and playoff resume are totally different. Seeing all this, I love this team and will always be a Ravens fan. I'm just done with going in feeling like this could be the year or championship or bust. For it seems we come up shorter and shorter every year with the same explanation and, exec- and execution to why. Meanwhile, the Chiefs and our division rival do it with these. Remember, staying relevant over championships, compete over contend. Mm. That was powerful right there, man. That this was a uh, woof. That was that, that was yeah. <laughs> woof. Um and yeah, that's what it's been. And that's a harsh reality. I remember um last year going into or I guess this year cuz the season ain't over yet, but going into this season, I said I didn't see the Ravens as a, a Super Bowl contender. I, I didn't see them as a contender. Um, people asked, they would, and we did it on questions from subscribers plenty of times too. People say, oh, what, are, what, what do you think the Ravens are going to do this year? How do you, how far you think they're going to get? I said, I think AFC Championship, the farthest they're going to go. Um, I, I thought, I always thought they would definitely make the playoffs. I thought they would be 12 and 5. Um, obviously, things change, and I know with Lamar's injury, that, that changed a lot, but they were, what, 10 and 7, I think? Um, but I just, I did not see them as a Super Bowl team. I didn't. Um, I was hoping that they would prove me wrong, but. I just didn't see them as a Super Bowl team. And depending on it, we'll see how things go next year. But now, moving forward, things just got that much more difficult. They got that much more difficult. So it's like I can see where my guy Rodell is coming from because when things, when things were easier, so to speak, and what I mean when I say easier as far as like with the contracts and stuff, how the contracts were set up with Lamar being on a rookie deal, when things were easier, so to speak, Ravens didn't take full advantage and they – and now things will be harder because if they keep Lamar, yeah, he's going to count a significant amount toward the cap and whatnot. Uh, in the first couple of years, it'd be straight. I mean, even after that, it'll be straight, too. They can always work it out. And it just depends on how bad do you want it or how bad do you want this player, that player, that player. If you really want somebody, you can make it happen. But things just got harder now because, I mean, you got to even keep Lamar in the first place. Oh, well, if they want to. We'll see what happens with that. But. You got to keep him in the first place, and then on top of that, you, you got to do this whole roster, like not the whole roster over again, but especially on offense. You you got because you, you ain't even got an offensive coordinator right now. Like as of this recording, they ain't even got an offensive coordinator right now. Um, you talked about you're gonna rebuild the wide receiver room. Like you got some serious stuff you got to do, man. You got some serious stuff you got to do, um, but you still got the same leader in place. Um, so I, I if I had to guess where your lack of confidence was coming from. I think it would be because the Ravens have all the same leadership in place um, as far as owner, as far as GM, as far as head coach. Um, and as far, yeah, you talked about how just a DeAndre Hopkins ain't going to be the, the, the biggest difference maker. I think he would be a significant difference maker. But in my opinion, it would take more than that. It would take for me, it would take more so philosophy changes as well, because obviously the, the, the play on the field has to be good, too. But it starts off the field. Uh, so, so much stuff would have to change for these Ravens to really, like, really be 
For real. CD Lamb. Next question came from my boy Dylan. He said, Angry Raven, hope all is well with the family, and let's get ready for a whirlwind of an offseason. Yeah, that's what it's going to be. I know there's a lot of speculation about Lamar, and honestly, we don't deserve him. But if we keep him, we better make the most of him. Anyway, to my point, in my opinion, I think Rashad Bateman can be that dude I truly do. Just to put in perspective, he was available for seven games, although there was one or two games you could tell he couldn't go. And was our fifth leading receiver in yards. Third, if you take out the tight ends. This speaks volumes and how much we need that number one guy. See, with that, it all depends on how you look at it. Yeah, Rashad Bateman, um, he he gonna be nice, man. Uh, I just hope that he can stay healthy. I just really hope everybody can stay healthy. That's Lamar too. Lamar too. He been he done gone out the past couple uh, couple seasons toward the end of the season. We hope that he can stay healthy for the full year. Um, with Bateman, we hope that he just everybody, man, because uh, health is wealth. Now, um, with Bateman, with him, what do you say, being fifth? Our fifth leading receiver, um, that shows you how how much the receivers are not involved. Cause Bateman was out for a long time, and nobody, I mean, nobody like took off with anything as far as the receivers and whatnot. We know there were injuries and whatnot, and there were this and that, but still, that's like that shows you about their scheme. But anyway, well, their previous scheme. We'll see how the new one ends up being. Uh, he said. The reason this email is titled C.D. Lamb is because my family are Cowboys supporters, which means I also see stuff what happens there. However, they drafted C.D. Lamb when they didn't need to. They had Amari Cooper and Michael Gallup at the time uh, was coming along. There was no pressure on Lamb, and look how good he is now. In no ways am I comparing Bateman to Lamb, but Bateman has shown that he can work the best corners in the game. He took Xavier Howard to the cleaners earlier this season. Bateman, healthy as a number two, I think will be phenomenal, especially with a healthy Duvernay in the slot to work the linebackers. Anyway, that's just my thoughts with things I've seen. It doesn't always work, but I feel Bateman could be the one that breaks the mold. P.S. Dobbins is that man. If a player is telling you to give him the load of work, trust him and feed him. Otherwise, what does that message send? <laughs> well, oh yeah. Whew, we don't know what message that sent. Uh, but now apparently Greg Roman stepped down, so we'll see. Anyway, um, yeah, uh, I, I like how you put that about uh, when C.D. Lamb came in with Amari Cooper, Michael Gallup. Uh, there was a, other guys around to really alleviate the pressure off of him. And that's what I've been hoping that they would do with Bateman, too. And, I, I mean, I hope that they did that with him from jump. Um, and with they they did, but they didn't uh, two years ago. Uh, when had Hollywood, so he was continuing to come along, drafted Bateman. So I was, like, hyped about that. And they, and they had signed Sammy Watkins. But I was like, ah, with Sammy Watkins, like, cool, but we, we can't, like, trust him because he's injury prone. He, he's Missed a lot of time with injury. That ended up showing itself. Uh, then Bateman got hurt. Um, and then the following year, and then they traded Hollywood. Sammy was going, well, temporarily. He ended up coming back later, but Bateman uh, ended up getting hurt again, unfortunately. But still, it was all on him and the Ravens. Not only was all the pressure on Bateman to be the guy, but all the pressure was on the Ravens for him to be the guy. Because it was Bateman or bust last year. Bateman got hurt. Everything it went to shambles. So hopefully this year, uh, again, all the guys can stay healthy, but hopefully this year they can really, like, really add some significant talent to go along with Bateman and go along with Duvernay, go along with whoever else is here. Um, and that's both via trade, because in free agency, it look like too much, but we'll see. But that's via trade or free agency and also the draft, too. Yeah, this feels like a dream. Team, keep it clean. Welcome to another episode of Questions from Subs, where you can ask any question you want to, and we answer it in a video just like this. If you want to be a part of it for the patrons, the Team Keep It Clean patrons, you can send your question directly on Patreon. Uh, if any of y'all would like to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash angravenviz, and if not, that's fine too. Now, for everybody else, uh, if you want an opportunity to be part of Questions from Subs, you can send an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com. Don't send it anywhere else, please. Because if you send it anywhere else, it's going right in the garbage. Anyway, next question came from my guy, Den. He said, peeing on us more and telling them it's raining. Oh, yikes. Uh, hey, Graven, hope all is well with you and the family, especially your little one. Hey, appreciate that. 
Oh, yeah, I mean, he ain't so little no more. But anyway, he said, I have a lot to say about the Ravens. Frankly, I do not trust nothing they, they said at the press conference. Firstly, all the smoke that they allowed to leak out of the building about the Lamar. And then uh, right after the season's over, they come out and saying all is well. Uh, they just peed on Lamar. And now they're telling him it's raining. Oof. Roquan deserved his. Oh, well, first off with that part, um, that that was significant. And I do see what you're saying, because, yeah, there was a lot of stuff coming out. There was this story after this story and this story. Um, and they they didn't do anything to refute it. Uh, they just let it continue to pile on, and that's that's your quarterback. You're supposed to be defending him as a team. As a, a you, you're supposed to step out there and say, "Hey, no, uh, uh-uh, shut that down." Because the Ravens obviously hear all the noise. They hear all of that stuff. They hear all of it. Um, but they they didn't step in to shut it down. So that that was something. Um, now when they did, they eventually did. Uh, I I and I remember we made a video about it. I just wish they would have done it sooner than they did. Um, so anyway, uh, he said Roquan deserved his money and I'm glad he got it because he made the defense better. However, as they pointed out that the press conference, it took six days to do the contract. Why did it take six days? You may ask because they're offering the most guaranteed money and the highest per year salary at his position. After that, what is there to haggle about? Offer Lamar the most guaranteed money and the highest yearly average salary at his position and the deal will be done, (laughs) done in six hours. Hey, look, I, okay, you you might be an agent. Check you out, man. He said they are castrating his leadership inside the locker room because they are basically telling everyone they don't really believe in Lamar. The team will start feeling the exact same at the slightest hint of any trouble on the field. Who do you think the Ravens are showing that they are believing more, believing in more, and who their leader is, Smith or Lamar? That is such a great question. That is such a great question. And I, I think they've definitely been showing that as Roquan. I think they've definitely been, because they, they've been pushing him. I, I remember um, my guy Mike B, he sent in a question months ago about this. And I didn't see it back then. I, I did not see it back then. But as time has gone along and you just, you see them sort of sort of elevating Roquan to, be, hey, th- this is the guy. This is who we following. That's our leader. That's who we, we riding behind. Um, and it's, it's nothing wrong with having more than one leader on a team. That's a great thing when you can have multiple leaders, but it's really seeming like that's the direction that they're going in. But this offseason, this question, I, I can't fully answer this question. This offseason will, though. Next question came from my guy, Jake. He said, what's up, Engraving? It's Jake here. Hope you and fam and the viewers are doing great. I uh, want to say thanks on behalf of all of Team Keep It Clean viewers. Thank you for another wonderful season of coverage. Keep it up. I hey, appreciate that, man. Now, diving into it, some offseason changes. I really hope EDC and Harves aren't lying about this wide receiver room. We all do. Uh, with that said, I say splash and trade for DeAndre Hopkins. I know it'll have some problems with cap and salaries and all that, but as we know, the cap is cap. Hey, bringing that back, baby. He said, keeping DuVernay Bateman coming back, and honestly, I'd have Robinson back uh, really stepped up. Also adding DeAndre Hopkins into that, that's a great receiving core. That could be something. That could certainly be something, uh, especially if everybody can stay healthy. Yeah, they, they could do some things. To clear up some cap, Peters is gone. Uh, Calais retires. Houston retires. No need for JPP. I think all of that happened regardless, whether the Ravens upgrade this receiver room or not. Uh, but he said, there's cap opening up, but got to fill those roster holes. If I'm EDC, I'm using that first rounder on the corner. Mm. Mm. I think it all depends. Me, I'm, I'm thinking receiver. Every, everything just depends on if Lamar is here or not. Uh, but anyway, uh, he said, lastly, Dobbins, we have a real massive talent on our hands. And because of that, Edwards should be traded or cut, in my opinion. Wow, there's, there's a lot of people getting on this trade or cut Gus Edwards train. There's a lot of them. Now, the only way I would uh, agree with that, um, me, I, I love just the more talent you have back there, the better, in my opinion. Um, but the only way, the only thing that would make me, oh, yeah, cut Gus Edwards or trade him would be if they're going to continue not to use him. If you're just going to have him sitting around, posted up, chilling, all right. And then actually you make J.K. the guy. They have not made him the guy yet. They haven't done it. They've had opportunities to, but they haven't done it. It seems like they're going to, but they haven't done it. So that would be the only reason. But I, I don't know, man. Anyway, he said, Edwards is great and his cap hit is about five mil, but we cut back on the crazy talent Dobbins has to play a guy who isn't as talented. I'm not a fan of the running back by committee when you have a stud running back one. Mm, That's powerful right there. Um, As far as that, uh, I I see what you're saying. But yeah, because that's what I was saying about about if you're not going to use him, all right, let let, let him be. Let him go somewhere that will actually use him. But it's nice. It's nice to have him there, man. 
it's nice to have him there just in case. It's, it's nice to have a, a good uh, RB2, so to speak, um, even though you don't even have a clear RB1. Cause that's, but I would just, um, yeah, the running back by committee, it's like yes and no all at the same time. If you're just sharing carries just to share carries, no. Nah. You go with the hot hand and, and you have somebody that can come in and change the pace with, okay, cool. But, yeah, I, I see what you're saying, but, ah, man, it, it'd be tough for me for Gus. And I know you can get running backs here and there and everywhere, and Ravens do a pretty good job overall of uh, making running backs, um, especially with them being a running team. Um, but, and especially if, if Lamar was back too. Like, you see how J.K. was running and Lamar wasn't even there. Imagine Lamar back too because Lamar just adds that element where defense has got to be like, oh, now we got to watch for him to run too because we know they're going to cause some QB keepers. We know that they're going to make Lamar take off. But, um, yeah, if you, man. But that's gusto, man. This question came from my guy Donovan. He said, what's up, Engraven? Hope you and the fam are doing good. Just wanted to ask, do you think the Ravens are looking for an offensive coordinator to be there long term or somebody we know who can come in and do the job uh, but might not stay for at least two years? For example, somebody proven like Eric Bieniemy, I would love to have him join the Ravens, but I think if he has a successful year, there's no way he continues to stay unless we offer him a head coaching job because he's bound to get one eventually. That is a really, really great question. Um, I think somebody asked something along these lines uh, recently, but this is such a great question. Um, I don't know that. Wow. Um, because if you, yeah, like you've mentioned, if you bring in like Eric B enemy, somebody who's known around the league, hasn't got a head coaching opportunity yet. I'm not, I'm not sure why, but if you bring somebody like him in and he comes and turn this thing around, then people could be looking at him like, Hey, Eric B enemy, we want to interview you for our head coaching job. Especially if you, uh, but at the same time, are, are the Ravens doing that? Is John Harbaugh preparing to retire? Me personally, I don't think so. Um, but you, you never know. But I, I, I don't think so. I don't think he's looking to retire anytime soon right now. Um, I know there has been some people thinking that and like sort of speculating on it and whatnot. But I, I just don't think he's getting ready to retire. Um, but yeah, that that would be something. Or do you bring in somebody more unknown, unpolished, or whatever? Um, to be your offensive coordinator, uh, so maybe they may not get as many looks, uh, for a head coaching opportunity, um, and they would be here for a bit longer than somebody who's more established would. That that that's such a really really great question, and man, you man, I, I don't even know what to say. Chicken before the egg. Next question came from my guy Griff. He said, uh, "Do you think the Ravens will have to resolve the Lamar situation before making a de decision on the offensive coordinator job?" No. Mm -mm. I, I I think you'll be offensive coordinator first because you have to do everything you can to keep Lamar. Well, if you want to keep Lamar, you have to do everything you can to keep Lamar. So say, for instance, you choose an offensive coordinator, somebody that he wasn't feeling, then he could definitely be like, all right, well, yeah, you know what? It, it was fun, Baltimore. I appreciate everything. So uh, I think it would have to be the offensive coordinator um, and then uh, – probably franchise tag but then you show him like all right Lamar this is what we're gonna do we're gonna bring in this receiver and you actually make it happen and then after that uh you will hope to sign him to a long-term deal what if we sign Odell next question came from my guy Terrence he said Odell's gonna be healthy someday oh yeah he said someday uh do you think he'll be in price range for the Ravens to uh maybe try for there were reports last late in the season saying that they were still speaking with Odell uh so what do you think of the possibility he's the vet wide receiver that the Ravens signed I do think it's a possibility that that happens uh, since, yeah, they have been keeping tabs uh, on him and with him. Um, so I do do think it's a possibility. Um, it's just with Odell, when he plays, he can play. That boy can play. Um, but my, my worry would be his health. So say, for instance, what if you went and got DeAndre Hopkins? It's like, oh, all right, cool. Uh, what if you went and... Drafted a still receiver to somebody NFL ready to okay cool and then on top of that what if you sign Odell Beckham Jr. okay cool and you still got Rashad Bateman and Devin Duvernay coming back okay I'm cool with it next question came from my guy Stefan he said what's up Engraven got a quick question for you with Leftwich being let go do you think we have a shot at getting him as our offensive coordinator I think they definitely do uh, and apparently they are interested in Byron Leftwich as a possible candidate for the offensive coordinator position um or the role or whatever. Uh, so yeah, I, I think they definitely got a shot. Um, Ravens apparently are really stretching, casting their net far and wide um, with different offensive coordinators or possible offensive coordinators. I don't think 
nobody's been hired yet. Uh, as far as the teams that need an offensive coordinator, nobody's been hired yet. Been some interviews, a lot of interviews here and there, but nobody's been hired yet. So I think once that first domino falls, whoever ends up making it fall, then the other teams will start following. Your Lamar. Next question came from my guy Ronald. He said, hey, hope all is well and the family's doing great. What if you or Lamar and Ravens offered you 190 mil guaranteed? You pick the offensive coordinator, bona fide number one wide receiver via trade, and either a wide receiver you picked in the draft or Marquise Brown. You know Hollywood ain't coming back here. Would you sign? Mm. Um... I would do all of that first. I would go through everything first um, before because if because you could offer the money and what if I signed already and be like, all right, thanks. And then they'd be like, ah, you know what? Mm, uh, we'll take care of all the rest of the stuff. No, uh -uh. you show me that you're going to do all this stuff first. Then we'll talk to contract. And the last question on this episode came from my guy Leon. He said, "Applying the pressure." Hey, Graven, hope all is well. It looks like opposing defenses are not the only ones applying pressure on Lamar. We have seen in recent days and reports of current teammates, former players, turned media members, and reporters pressuring Lamar to play through his injury. He sent this on January fifteenth, by the way. Uh, he said, "However, the Ravens come off as the model franchise, seeming to be supporting of Lamar, but I am not going to let the Ravens organization off the hook. The Ravens have been pressuring Lamar since he got injured six weeks ago. Fans just haven't seen it. Let me tell you how. As a counselor, it is easy for me to recognize." manipulation which is a form of pressure to get people to do what you want them to do Ooh, this is about to be good uh when lamar first got injured harbaugh came out and said after the mri that lamar was week to week that's true uh, at the same time, ESPN Media has said a PCL injury uh, requires at least three weeks to heal. This put Lamar in a one to three week timetable to return. The pressure is applied as the Ravens were reluctant to rule him out for a three week period, setting uh, on a weekly decision on to play status. Uh, this is so Lamar keeps it in mind that the timetable exists. Now, uh, here is where the pressure gets ramped up. A Baltimore sports columnist writes the scathing report about Lamar slacking, being inactive in his rehab. This puts Lamar's character in question before the whole sports world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was an article, article by uh, Mike Preston. Uh, he said, any time you make allegations about someone's character, especially when it has been the opposite of what has been evident, is defaming. The pressure, though, is... Uh covertly being applied by the Ravens, and here's how. The columnist who wrote the story about Lamar is well known to the Ravens organization. Thus brings into question, did the Ravens know about the story or article before its release publicly? Of course they did. There's absolutely no way the Ravens did not have the heads up, maybe even gave the go ahead when there's such a negative narrative about the star quarterback. Mm. Uh, why would they do this? To put pressure on Lamar to prove the public perception wrong and to get back on the field. We can see this is manipulating pressure because within a few days, the same colonists does a 180 and recants the entire piece. Now, what would make him do that? I will tell you what. The same people who gave the okay to write the initial story, the Ravens, realized that Lamar did not take the bait to rush back. As a result, the Ravens realized they were in danger of alienating Lamar, so they had the columnist recant the entire story. Now the columnist looks foolish because he could not have wrote that story without consent, but the columnist cannot reveal his source. But in the truth, Ravens are the only one with information about Lamar's situation. We know that Lamar's camp is always buttoned up. Mm. So you talking about that, the game within the game, the business. That is a nasty business. Oof. He said, additionally, the most recent reports that Lamar can play through his injury and the suggestion by former players turned commentator and also teammates are, pressure, are pressuring L to provoke Lamar to play. Furthermore, as Lamar provided his own injury update, the same media persons and teammates seem to oppose his account of his injury. Uh, more Ravens pressure is the most recent report that the Ravens still want Lamar to sign in the offseason. Uh, wow, what manipulation or and pressure. The reports come out. Wild card week when the Ravens are most desperate for a win. The pure need of a win this weekend is why the we want to sign Lamar narrative came out. I say this because they could have made the same claim the first, second, third, or any other week Lamar was out injured. But applying the pressure during crunch time is clear manipulation. Oh, man, you just, you on it. Wow. Lamar sees it too. That is why he came out with his own self-report. Uh, when have we heard of an injured player provide that type of insight to an injury before? That's true. That is like... That's different. That's, that's really different. Like, they, they don't be doing that. All right, but anyway, he said, we haven't. Uh, the Ravens have allowed Lamar's back to go uncovered, mm. allowing the idea that he does not work hard, allowing the idea that he can play through his injury, and allowing the idea to circulate that it is about a contract. See Sammy Watkins' comment. You don't allow a player who has only been back for two or three weeks to make that statement unless it is to pressure Lamar. You see, the pressure is all done through the media so that the Ravens keep their hands clean. Let me know what you think. Ooh, that was deep. 
and yeah, the media is definitely used to spin stuff, to put stuff out there, um, to leak stuff, uh, to to change the fans and public perception of different players and whatnot. Uh, it is definitely real. And I, again, this off season, we are going to so much of what we've been thinking and wondering about. So many of our questions are finally going to be answered. And a lot of this stuff that you mentioned, so much of it this off season. It should be cleared up. Yeah.